Hello there. Greetings. Salutations. Sorry I hadn't made any videos for a couple days. I'd been absorbing an enormous amount of information out of various parts of the world, specifically Australia, by the way. I'm an information sponge. I always have been. Maybe that's my only redeeming characteristic. I don't know. <laughs> Did I say that out loud? I'll edit that out of this video. Um, I wanted to talk about the, the secrets of fields, but specifically also to magnetism. And Even I myself am fascinated by how many videos and how in-depth you can get in talking about something as simplex, but not simple, simplex, as the magnetic field. Magnetism, by definition and denotation, is a force vector. Specifically, it's the three-dimensional toroidal vector of the loss of energy or inertia, as we defined in the dielectric, which, whose geometry is a hyperboloid, which the negative image of a hyperboloid is a torus, the negative image of a torus is a hyperboloid. Hyperboloid, by the way, is an hourglass shape, and of course a torus is a donut shape, specifically regarding magnetic attraction. And uh, this idea, due to lodestones, which are naturally occurring, and of course we've had compasses now for many, many, many thousands of years. I mean, ever since human beings discovered lodestones, God knows how many tens of thousands of years ago, they discovered that uh, when placed on a piece of cork or magnetizing a piece of uh, steel, that you know, when you put it in a cup of water, then uh, that uh, magnetized uh, needle will uh, point in a specific direction, and that, of course, becomes useful as instrumentation for navigation and guidance, and incredibly fascinating. And to the perspective of our ancients, of course, that is magical, something from the realm of the gods, to be sure, from their perspective. And they had as analytical minds as we did. By the way, the notions of uh, dragons and uh, these enormous mythical beasts and we have evidence for this in plenty, especially in Greece, came from their discovery of uh, dinosaur bones, you know, peeking out of uh, the sides of hills. I mean, if you were an ancient 10,000 years ago in Greece and you saw this giant skull with enormous teeth on it, you know, this long spine, you know, you would come up with a dragon. Because we actually found ancient Greek temples where, where uh, dinosaur bones were discovered. They were actually put on altars where people could come and see you know, the long since dead dragons and other mythical beasts. I mean, of course, so it's not fantastical. It's, from their perspective, logical, even though incomplete. But anyway, getting back uh, to magnetism, I'd actually like to clearly define something so uh, simply, uh, so simplex, yet so completely misunderstood, because everybody thinks, and I've encountered this thousands of times, well, sure we know what magnetism is. It's an... And devices we use every day from our cell phones or TVs, a satellite, everything has a magnet in it, almost. So we know how they work. No, we don't. Um, there's no branch of science, too, that's actually ever defined the word field. I'll define a field for you in very, very simplex terms. A field is an ether perturbation modality. Just like ice, water, and steam are water modalities, just different temperature and pressure modalities of water. Field variations are just different uh, expressions of the ether, yeah? ether perturbation modality, just like uh, uh, transverse electrical magnetic versus scalar waves. And of course, scalar waves is a horrible description since they have no transverse component, which of course would define a wave by definition. What Nikola Tesla called his death ray, we call scalar waves. It just means it has no transverse component. Instead of measured in cycles or frequencies per second, it's measured in volts per second. So it's just a, uh, it's a longitudinal rarefaction and compression technically instead of a transverse oscillation. Uh, the higher the power in scalar waves, by the way, um, the, the more uh, rarefactions and compressions per unit of time you have, the higher the, uh, the frequency, the higher the power, just as like gamma radiation is nothing other than super high energy light. Uh, it has a smaller spatial footprint because the smaller the space, the higher the capacitance. When it comes to fields, to explain fields very simply, contrary to a regular box which holds a lot of stuff, a smaller box, in the case of fields, holds more energy. So 
it's just inverse to our regular human understanding because human beings don't think in terms of spatial versus counterspatial but to get to explaining magnetic attraction magnetic attraction in no way shape or form exists neither does so-called mutual mass acceleration regarding bodies that are not accelerating towards one another it's nothing other than electrostatic or ether torsion they're actually accelerating towards a null pressure point in counter space between the two this is actually extremely visible underneath the ferrule cell you'll actually see call it a black hole it's not a real black hole but it's this null pressure uh, node between uh, these magnets which are accelerating uh, just like gravity accelerating not towards one another but towards a null pressure point in counter space but ever since time immemorial we've known that these things are magnets whether it be lodestone or sumerium cobalt or neodymium iron boron or ferrite doesn't matter what the magnets made out of we actually have magnets they accelerate towards well, well that's they're magnets and are attracting towards one another superficially so and the devil's always in the details then that must be therefore magnetic attraction because it's magnets and they're accelerating towards one another so we got magnetic attraction every human being on this earth for thousands and thousands of years is completely convinced that magnetic attraction exists well this phenomena of course is undeniable nobody's denying this phenomena nor is anybody denying gravity yeah but masses don't accelerate towards one another but when you look at them in the case of gravity your so-called magnetic attraction which doesn't exist well of course they're accelerating towards one another well superficial observances are usually as is always the case almost most of the time the case wrong superficial observances i'm making an accurate observance well these are two magnets are accelerating towards another so that's magnetic attraction therefore it's yeah Magnets accelerating magnetic attraction. Every human being suffers under that, but magnetic attraction doesn't exist. Magnetism, by definition, yes, is the three dimensional toroidal force vector defining that ether perturbation field modality that we call magnetism. And magnetism is no different than the dielectric field. The loss of energy or inertia manifests as a three dimensional force vector. And by the way, the extrapolation of a three dimensional force vector, a three dimensional S curve, which is the most fundamental force vector in Mother Nature, is a three dimensional S curve. You could just take a piece of wire, bend it like the letter S, and take each end of the S and bend it inverse to one another, and you'll actually have the extrapolation of a toroid. Now, of course, this is a gold apple, but I mean, this is not a perfect toroid, but it's actually kind of accurate. Just like an egg, you know, an egg has a fat bottom and actually has a phase disparity, a ratio of one to five. And this is due to geomagnetic precession or precessional torque, just like you see the precession of a gyroscope. So you actually see the interior geometry extrapolated out from the three-dimensional force vector or the S-curve that is the magnetic force vector. So magnetic attraction absolutely does not exist because it is force. Acceleration is the opposite of force. Acceleration or mutual acceleration, whether it be gravity or so-called, but it doesn't exist, magnetic attraction is acceleration, acceleration, increasing inertia and acceleration towards counter space. Now here's the accurate way an enlightened human being that has spent countless years using retroductive uh, logical methodology to understand the true nature of magnetism, and I'm referring to myself here, to correctly understand magnetism. When you actually have a magnet, and by the way, this is incredibly important, I've mentioned it a thousand times, a magnet is not a quantitative object, it is a qualitative object, okay? Because before a magnet becomes a magnet, it is quantitatively identical before as it is after. Therefore, the only thing that actually defines a so-called magnet, this is a magnet, yes it is, the only thing that defines a magnet is qualitative nature, i.e. that it's a point source object. When a magnet is created, what you actually have is a binary, it is like a torus or a donut, right? You actually have this little vortex right here on top and this little vortex right down here on the bottom, right? What is created is a binary vortex. So the magnetic field, we can look at this apple. They say, well, here's a toroidal shape. And an apple is generally speaking a toroidal shape. You know, we have a little vortex a pattern indentation up here on the top and also two on the bottom. So, okay, it's a vortex. Accurate. But when you create a toroidal uh, field geometry in the case of the magnet, and this toroidal geometry is the magnetic field in the case of the magnet, well, that's accurate. 
But what is doing the acceleration is not the toroidal geometry, as in the case of this apple, for example, but rather this counterspatial binary vortex that is the hole, if you will, in the toroid of the donut. Torus and donut, both, of course, a torus. So superficial observances, while well accurate, are inaccurate as far as the correct denotation of what is going on with this. Well, these are magnets. They're accelerating towards one another. It's magnetic attraction. Accurate superficial observations existed for thousands of years. Every human being suffers under that delusion, but it is inaccurate. What is created in the generation of a magnet, of course, is a point source object. But that point source object, which has, of course, this nice toroidal magnetic field also has, since it's a conjugate geometry of the entire universe, this vortex counterspatial sink, you know, right here. I'm kind of using this uh, gold plaster apple as an example. Yeah, you can see the little sink right here. Yeah. This is what is doing the accelerating because there's no such thing as magnetic acceleration, or in the case of the vernacular, magnetic attraction. It cannot exist. There's no such thing as mutual acceleration in the case of something that is force, centrifugal force divergence by its very definition, i.e. the three-dimensional force vector that defines the toroidal geometry that is magnetism. Capiche? Very, very simple. So, the point source field geometry, clearly the defined geometry that fascinates everybody is the properties of the magnet. It's just a qualitative object. It is not quantitative, once again. So this toroidal field geometry is force by definition. Magnetic attraction does not exist. When a point source field exists, then the defined conjugate geometry of the magnet, therefore, does also too exist. So. You create a double vortex in the case of a torus. If you think of a torus, you have the double vortex, yes? What is doing the attraction is not the magnetic field at all. It is the increasing inertia and acceleration towards counter space, i.e. a dual conjugate counterspatial sink or vortex. People love the word vortex. Say counterspatial sink, say vortex. It means one and the same thing, tomato, tomato. We're still referring to the exact same thing, so. Talk about field induction under the field of influence of the ether. Um, this is uh, what Nikola Tesla called the environment. The environment, of course, is reference to the ether. So I hope I made that simple. I tried to make this video very, uh, very, very simple, talking about the simplex nature of what genuine magnetic attraction is, which. There's no such thing as magnetic attraction. It is the dielectric acceleration of the dual conjugate vortex towards counter space, i.e. the dielectric hyperboloid, or the hourglass shape, which is the negative image of the torus. Yes, superimposition of the negative image of the torus is hyperboloid. The negative image of the hyperboloid is, of course, the torus. So it is literally that simple, the yin and the yang of the entire universe. I hope you liked this video. If you did, any donation is always warmly welcome. But magnetic attraction does not exist. This phenomenon is undeniable. I'm not denying this phenomenon. That's not the point. The point is, what is it actually? And we have to get past superficial observance as well. There's magnets. They're accelerating towards one another. So therefore, it's magnetic attraction. I can see how you would see that. And every human being has seen that for many, many thousands of years. Literally many thousands of years. But it is inaccurate. Correct understanding of the nature of the universe is the stepping stone towards wisdom and clarity of understanding. So if you like this video, any donation is warmly welcome. Tell me you don't like it. That's also too fine. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.